Hi everyone, I'm Ollie Lovell and I'm excited to have an opportunity to speak with you today about cognitive load theory. What is cognitive load theory? So it was funny the other day actually when Lynn asked me to give a brief introduction to cognitive load theory because even though I've now written a whole book on the topic, I realize that not once in the book do I actually define in, in a short and concise way what cognitive load theory is. So here's a world first definition for you, never presented anywhere else before. Um, today I'm going to define cognitive load theory as follows. Cognitive load theory is a series of instructional recommendations built upon the knowledge of how humans learn. And there that is there. And to that I'd kind of like to add what it is that cognitive load theory helps us to do. And what that is is cognitive load theory shines a light on some of the main barriers that get in the way of learning and empowers teachers with the tools required to remove them. Now that's a pretty broad definition and it has to be because cognitive load theory is such a deep idea and I'll I was really racking my brains about how to best explain it in in a really short time. And so I've come up with a bit of an example and hopefully that will help to paint a clearer picture. So imagine we're in a science classroom, maybe year seven, year eight, and we're trying to teach our students about the periodic table. So this is actually, this almost this exact slide is a slide that I saw in a high school science class a couple of weeks ago. And this is how it went. So the teacher showed up the slide had this information on it and the student the teacher also presented each student with their own periodic table and so they were saying things like okay each box on the periodic table represents an element so find a box on your table have a look at it and identify that element now the atomic number gives a number of protons and so on and so forth now i'd imagine if each of you at home today had a periodic table in front of you you wouldn't have too much trouble following along but surprisingly as i looked around the classroom the students many of them looked quite lost and were struggling quite a bit now with our cognitive load theory, we could try to explain what was going on here and we'd probably come up with some ideas like the students were a bit lost, they were a bit confused, they were a bit overloaded, but we really don't have a precise, or at least before I learned about cognitive load theory, I didn't have a precise way to explain what might be the sources of these blockages to student learning. But today we're going to have a look at two that come from cognitive load theory. The first idea is the redundancy effect. And the redundancy effect I summarize as eliminate unnecessary information and do not replicate necessary information. So if we were to apply the recommendations of the redundancy effect to this set of slides, it could look as follows. Each box represents an element. The atomic number gives a number of protons. The one or two letters in the middle gives the element symbol and the word gives the element's name. So that's just tightening things up. And I'm, I'm sure you're thinking, okay, that's great. You've, you've tightened it up, you've shortened it a little bit, but that's not groundbreaking. That's okay, because next we apply the split attention effect. And the split attention effect was, when I looked around the classroom, this was really the thing that was inhibiting students' learning. So I've summarized the split attention effect as follows. Information that must be combined should be placed together in space and time. Let me explain to you what that means. Basically, what was happening here was students were seeing the information on the board and they were trying to compare that to the periodic table that was in front of them. What they were doing is they were looking up to the board, reading the instructions and looking down to the periodic table. And the actual act of mentally integrating the information here and the information there was causing what we call a high cognitive load. And for many students, that was too much for them. They became overloaded and that inhibited their learning. So what would it look like if we actually incorporated the recommendations of the split attention effect in this context? Firstly, we want to, basically we just want to reduce that split attention. So here we go. We could present a picture of the periodic table actually there in front of them or one of the elements therein. Each box represents an element. Here's the atomic number and that represents the number of protons. Here's the element symbol and here's the element's name. So what's happened here? We've taken a scenario in which students were confused and really we've used cognitive load theory to break apart what it might be, or what it might have been within that scenario that was causing student confusion and we've used the recommendations from cognitive load theory to refine those instructional materials in a way that will hopefully lead to greater learning. Now, my time's up and we've really only just scratched the surface, but cognitive load theory goes much deeper. It contains and covers all of these ideas but I hope today 
in, in what I have had time to discuss, I've given you two new ideas, the redundancy effect and the split attention effect, and I've hopefully whetted your appetite to explore these ideas further. Thanks for listening. Thank you.